So it was really pretty bold of them to pick up a video game related peripheral, but then it wasn't the software that they were concerned about, it was the hardware, which is what they do best. I'm David Warhol, and I led the team of four that developed the hardware prototype and the uh, circuit board and the firmware for the Power Glove. What a lot of people don't realize is that the Power Glove is based on ultrasound rather than infrared light. It's based on the speed of sound. On the glove itself, we have two transmitters, transmitter A and B. And we have, over at the TV set, three receivers receiver one, receiver two, and then receiver three. So the way the glove figures out where it is in space is that it chirps transmitter A and then listens on receiver one for how long it takes for the sound to get there. Then we do another chirp on transmitter A and listen for it on receiver two, and then we do another chirp on transmitter A and then we receive it on three. Then we repeat that whole sequence, but using transmitter B. So given the amount of time it takes, we triangulate the distance of the glove, the rotation of the glove, the yaw, Now, what we didn't realize when we started the project, but became apparent about halfway through, is that based on the manufacturing tolerances of the transmitter, and based on the speed of sound, this whole cycle could only be done 20 times a second, which is three times slower than your typical Nintendo hand controller. So we knew from halfway through that the use of the glove as a hand controller would not be as responsive as using the actual controller itself. What really became important was that games would be ready that used these interface tolerances as part of their design. 